Raise your hands Take a second and breathe in Sing an Receiving love and operating out of that love and not fear um, is the most important like call that we have as creators because if we are operating from the position of fear or will I ever be good enough or um, whatever it may be, then it's going to come out in your creations. Um, but when love is, is sitting in that position, you're free and you're free to be who you are in whatever season that you're in, whether it be a painful one or a good one. And creations and different things allow all of that stuff to come to the forefront as, as humans. Have real moments with your creativity and allow yourself to be as authentic as, as you possibly can. I mean, to, to say like the you're the, you are the only you is like maybe a cheesy statement, but it is true. Free with your head held so high Cause you never let up the fight You never gave in on those days In the pain And that's what makes this life so wonderfully awesome And horribly awful Yet somehow it's beautiful anyway. I continue to say this week after week, but Creator Sessions is a place where we get to give weight to the creative process through the lens of the artists that we most admire. And our hope is that the lessons that come out of these sessions will ultimately help you on your journey. This episode with our artist, Judah Akers, without a doubt, will fill your spirit with the encouragement that you need to keep going. If you're not familiar with Judah, he is the lead singer of the folk alternative band, Judah and the Lion, and he works on several other projects too. He is an incredibly dynamic artist, and during this session, he performs songs from one of his new projects, Pink Laundry, and another from his self-titled project, Judah, along with a couple from Judah and the Lion. This creator session, maybe more than any before it, offers the most direct encouragement to artists and creators to just keep going. And after meeting Judah, I'm confident that one of his gifts is just making people feel seen. And what's best about this episode is that you're going to feel like he is talking only to you. Judah Akers on Creator Sessions. Got the call on the streets in Seattle Said, honey, I don't got much time to talk I broke down cause I knew what was next She said, I'm okay but I'm locked in a holding cell Someone gets me out, can you help me? I got no one else So there I was, a defenseless middle kid Crying out for the right words to say Sorry I can't do anything at all So I hung up and called I hung up and called you Cause you the one You the one I needed You the one You the one I needed The most Why did you run? Why did you run? Why did you run? So I took a stupid fight with him after the accident Funny now cause I thought it was your defense Cause I thought you were sober then So there I was, a lost kid looking for a home that he once knew so I broke down and called you I broke down and called you Cause you the one Oh You the one I needed You the one Why did you run? 
Why did you run? Why did you run? Oh, and I just want you to be. Want you to be happy. Want you to be happy. Why can't you be happy? Why can't you be happy with us? Why, why did you run? Why, why did you run? Why, why did you run? Oh, The writing process um, for me usually starts, uh, I remember as a kid, kind of my writing journey. Um, I grew up playing songs in church and my youth group and learned the guitar from my uncle. And um, a lot of my writing process starts with an experience in life. Um, I remember as like a ninth grader, 10th grader, my first dog dying and it was like horrible. And I went up and like wrote a song about my dog dying. So. Um, this is going to be a really inspiring uh, creative session for you guys. Um, it should be sad the whole time. Just kidding. Um, but the, yeah, the last song, Why Did You Run, kind of came from this season um, that I, I was kind of having these really hard moments with my both my parents. And um, the record that it lives on, um, I was kind of having to really honestly just kind of process um, the moments that I was going through because naturally even though I maybe come, come across as like an emotional person or whatever um, I can tend to bottle things and music and uh, creativity and writing has been a channel for me to express what's going on inside and even that song um, there's some really painful things that I'm saying um, but it's just true and um, I, I think creativity has to start with authenticity first and allowing yourself to be as honest as you can and looking inward as a creative is, is um, it's like a must um, looking inside, which is not always the funnest um, thing to do is, you know, looking inside, you kind of don't know what you're going to find <laughs> or what's going to come up. And, um, but it's, it's beautiful when it comes out. And I just encourage you as a, the creator that you are, to have real moments with your creativity and allow yourself to be as authentic as, as you possibly can. I mean, to, to say like the, you're the, you are the only you is like maybe a cheesy statement, but it is true. Um, so that, I guess kind of the, maybe a good segue into this next song. I, um, I, I grew up playing songs in church and, and writing and I was obsessed with, you know, playing and blah 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 but I remember the first time I picked up a guitar um, I just loved just the one the one and the four um, and just allowing words to kind of come out in that way and so this song this last year I, I came out with a worship record which honestly was a little bit scary for me um, talk about being trying to be as authentic as possible I um, you know, was in this alternative band uh, and coming out with worship music sometimes can lean a little bit more of, I, I didn't want people to um, stereotype me as uh, a Christian artist or like stereotype me into this like idea that I was some judgmental Christian now or whatever that stereotype may be. Um, but it, it's so a part of who I am and my faith, and I wanted it to be a part of what I was writing, even though these other songs that I'm writing, I think, reflect my faith and who I am, and that's honest. But I just love song, singing songs in church, um, like bringing back the little kid in me. So I actually got to sing this one with uh, one of my heroes, John Foreman, and uh, it's called Don't Know If I Believe It. said you'd never leave me that Nothing could ever stop your love 
you'd up and move a mountain Just to tell me that you're not far I don't know if I believe it And I don't know how to receive all that you give don't know how else to say this but Somehow I keep on falling More in love with you With you And I'm stuck at the bottom Of all my mess and foolish cycles You say that's when you're running Neither heaven nor hell could hold you back I don't know if I believe it Don't know how to receive all that you give And I don't know how else to say this Somehow I keep on falling More in love with you More in love If I surrender, if I surrender, oh, would you catch me then? If I surrender, oh, bring all my shit, cause I don't know if I believe it. But I guess I'll try to receive all that you and I don't know how else to say this but Somehow I keep on falling, falling, falling in love with you Sorry, I cursed. Um, that was the original lyric and then um, my buddy John was like, yeah, let's change that to uh, something else. <laughs> this is probably a good call. Um, but yeah, I, like for me, um, with, within the writing um, and just kind of the process and the journey, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a poet or a designer or whatever. I feel like we're all born and meant to be creators and um, whether that's just you're creating that, that you know, generating your life and creating um, kind of doesn't really matter what you're doing. My brother's an accountant and I would call him creative. Um, I think for me, within my journey, when I feel like that um, I'm stuck is uh, I actually don't believe in writer's block. Um, I think that means that you're just in a season of discovery and you're, you're kind of needing the rest from whatever you feel like that you're like, if I'm going to write a song up in my studio and I'm just can't find anything, um, I don't, uh, I used to kind of hate, like be hard on myself in that way. I'm a, I'm a competitor. I, um, I played sports growing up and I, I guess I'm disciplined in that way, whatever, like the discipline a college athlete has. Um, but I think if you find you're in this season of writer's block, if you want to call it that, um, I would argue to say that you might be in a season of discovery whether that be, for me, it's like discovering a new artist or uh, getting back reacquainted with nature or um, just allowing myself to live life and not beating myself up for not being able to fabricate some beautiful song of my loft every day. Um, some writers are different, like, um, not to bring up John again, but to bring up John again, and he feels like he writes every single day. And um, he's so good at that, and that's his process for me. If I get up there 
um, to the studio and I try to write a song and it's just not working, usually it's going to be a pretty bad song. And I feel like people see that throughout in like your life. Um, whatever you're creating, it needs to mean something and it needs to come from a place that is filled with passion and rage and energy. Yeah, during this period um, where we're kind of stuck at home, I started this project called Pink Laundry and it leans a little bit more rock, kind of punk um, side, which is very much uh, also a part of who I am growing up on different uh, kinds of music. And, you know, with, with my band Judah and the Lion, with the, the folk elements needing to kind of live there, I also wanted to have this like super rock, um, distorted drums, distorted vocal kind of saying different things, maybe in a little bit more of like a passionate rage way um, than the the, op, the optimistic side of me, which is kind of the Judah and Lion side. So I wrote this song for my wife. Uh, when I met her the first time, never forget it. She had um, no makeup on and she was wearing a white t-shirt and she was sweating her butt off and I was like in love right then. So there's a, there's a happy story for you in, in all of this. This one's called uh, Dirty Converse. Also, this is a little bit terrifying to me because I haven't played this song before. And when I'm recording these guitar parts, I usually don't sing while I'm playing them. So this could be an absolute chain wreck, but we're here for it. There, 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 there you were. White t-shirt and blue jeans on the porch No makeup or earrings Sweat on your face Porcelain skin that is making you blush Not like your baseball cap The way you rock it like you don't give a crap your dirty converse gliding over the earth You look so smooth that it hurts my eyes I cried Can I take you to lunch? Or maybe coffee cause I'm feeling a bunch of all these things they say when you are so young Oh God, I'm feeling so dumb about you So imagine like five screaming electrics and not a 12 string acoustic. You get the point. Um, but yeah, I, I just want to encourage you uh, as a creator. I, I think one of the biggest gifts in my life I remember was when I, when I first started it. I can kind of sing the first song. Maybe I'll remember it. I sing this song at, at church. And uh, feet, 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 feet down inside. Let it all out. Let it all out. It's in the wrong key, but... I can feel it down inside, let it all out, let it all out. That's my first song, it's the first chorus. Um, and I remember jumping off stage and I probably sang it pretty similarly, like it was kind of hard like finding the, the key or, or whatever. And I got off stage and I was really embarrassed, turning red and um, one of my mom's friends was there to kind of see it, it was like this special music. It was very, it was very, um, like I, I was literally like on the verge of tears. Like I'd embarrassed myself so bad. And uh, this person who was kind of like an aunt to me came up to me and was like, wow, I, I like really feel your um, spirit like coming out when you sing. And it was just a moment for me where I was like probably never going to pick up a guitar again. And this person gave me this beautiful gift of putting courage inside of me, which is encouragement. And so if you're here and you're needing some encouragement at, from creator to creator is I would just say like for you to be fully free in, in who you are in, as a writer and, or, or whatever kind of creativity that you have, you have to kind of 
disarm some of the negative thoughts that can kind of creep in and for you to fully become the creator that you're meant to be, which I believe is like your God-given right, then you have to be entranced with love and living and operating and breathing love and allowing people when they come up to you and they say kind things or whatever to let not necessarily live by those words or whatever that's that's unhealthy or whatever but receiving love and operating out of that love and not fear um is the most important like call that we have as creators because if we are operating um from the position of fear or will i ever be good enough or um whatever it may be then it's going to come out in your creations um but when love is, is sitting in that position, um, you're free. And you're free to be who you are in whatever season that you're in, whether it be a painful one or a good one. And creations and different things allow all of that stuff to come to the forefront as, as humans. So you're beautiful. You're a great creator. Um, and just believe that. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect at operating out of love all the time um that's also part of it part of it is like allowing yourself to be human and you know one of the biggest songs whatever for for us also came with like probably the most negative comments um and my my mentor one time said um i'm probably going to butcher this but paraphrasing he said um don't let the negative uh, or don't let the positives get to your head and don't let the negatives get to your heart and I feel like for creatives, that's a great statement, but it's not always um, the easiest thing to live by. And, and I, I, I have still, like, even through this last season that we've we've been on, been in, there is this kind of "Am I enough?" type question that keeps asking, you know, keep asking myself. Um, so I'm not definitely not a fish out of the water when it comes to operating completely in love and in believing in myself. Um, but I, I think that that also the the permission to 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 give yourself to be human is also really important. So if you're in a season of should I give this up or whatever, should I stop creating? Uh, the answer is no. You should keep creating and keep moving forward because um, there's a lot of beauty yet to be seen from from you. Yeah. So at, when we were coming up, um, this speaking about Judah and the Lion, we we loved shows. We loved touring. Um, and with that comes a lot of hard shows uh, that, that kind of make you as a band or as an artist. And I remember this one show in particular. We, we booked it on a Wednesday in Louisville, Kentucky, which is only a couple-hour drive from here in Nashville. And we had booked it at like 10 o'clock. It was on a Wednesday. It was like summer break or something for us. We were like, let's just do this. And we had just previously played a really big, like a big show for us at the time, like 200 people came, which was amazing. We were like freaking out. Um, but it was in our hometown, Nashville. So we thought we would just go to Louisville. And, you know, we were like two or three years old at this point. We had toured a little bit. We had been to Louisville before. And we get there and literally there's, there's, a, there's an opening band, but he's just doing like a 45 minute set. He goes over by by the hour. There's like probably fifty people, thirty to fifty people in there, and he gets done with his set. Everybody <laughs> leaves the venue. We get up there, and the five people that were in the audience were uh, our friends that we put on the guest list that actually were hosting us that night at their house. So like we literally, it was a family of five, and we we kind of honestly had a moment as a band that just said if we don't give it, give our all here, then we don't deserve to play the big shows. Um, and it was like really, because there, there had been shows previous to that to where we kind of phoned it in because, you know, no, no one's there responding. No one knows kind of the thing. And as an, as a creative, that's so hard when you're kind of pouring yourself into what you do, but it feels like it's kind of falling on deaf ears or it, it feels like it's just not, connecting or, or whatever and those moments there's two choices it's like do i stop doing this or do i just make this family of five like rage like they've never had before 
And so for for us and the guy, me and the guys, it, it was a defining moment really for our career because we were kind of looking forward to maybe possibly getting booked at Bonnaroo like the next summer or something like that. And we, I just kind of said, I was like, if we don't, if we don't give our all here, then we don't deserve to play that stage at Bonnaroo. And from then on, so we, there's another story too that we we did this house show thing, this house show run. Uh, one summer, I, I was I played college baseball, so summers um, were kind of off for me. So I chose not to play at summer leagues or whatever. If you're a college baseball fanatic, um, so summers are off. So we would go out on the road, and, and the way that we did it back in the day is we would put a put up a post and say, you know, Facebook, we'd love to come to your city, sleep on your floor, and play at your house. We're folk band. Um, we don't even need like inputs or anything. We do the we do the tour. All of our hometowns were sick. It's like 100 people or, you know, whatever show up. And we're like pumped. We get to the last show and it was it was kind of based, like you was kind of create your own experience. So these families that would host us, sometimes their moms would like make us dinner. And it was like, we kind of felt um, spoiled because we're all like living off of, you know, PB&J and ramen at the time. And so, and then we would like sleep on their floors that night and then go to the next place. Well, this last spot in Searcy, Arkansas, we get there, and it's a sweet family of four, uh, dad and mom, and it was probably like a six-month, that's a guess, and six, six-month-year-old baby and a two, like a toddler. And so we get there, set up, we're ready. It's about 7 o'clock, and we're like, hey, well, you know, when are the rest of the people coming? And they just look at us like, what other people? So we we played the set for the the parents and the two babies. They they actually asked us to stop because they had to put the baby down <laughs> midway through the set. So we we stopped and went back home to Nashville, and that was like the last show that we did before going back to school um, the next year. So we've definitely had our fair share of like bad taste in our mouth, re- revolving the vulnerability of going back on the road. Um, and you know, and that to say that that hasn't—I mean, that that truly hasn't stopped. There's there's certain shows that we're all just have felt like, man, that show didn't really feel like that they were connecting, or um, maybe we were expecting more people to show up or whatever. And in those moments, again, the choice is: do or, if you believe in music and if you believe in creativity, then that moment in time is a beautiful moment because those particular people are there. And you're there, and you're human. So, like, make that moment what you want. In full transparency, when I rewatched the film for this episode, I cried several times. To be honest, I'm surprised that I didn't cry in the moment. And I think that I even told Judah to just ignore me if that was happening. But I managed to hold it together, probably because I was so focused on making sure that the sound wasn't peaking. But when watching it back, it just really got me. And I was able to just really settle in and listen and feel what he was saying. It also happened to coincide with some personal struggles that I was navigating. So it couldn't have come at a better time because Judah's words just reminded me that I was loved. And my point in sharing that isn't to give you some peek into my personal life. It's to remind you of the importance that your work can have on people when you share it. Judah said that we're all born and meant to be creators, however that takes shape. He also said that creativity has to start with authenticity, and he couldn't be more right. My hope for you as a creator is that you watch this episode more than once, settle in, and just let yourself really hear and feel what he's sharing. And lastly, I hope that after watching this episode, you take a lesson from Judah's mom's friend, and you give the gift of encouragement to a creator that needs it. This last song, I this la- the last record for Judah and the Lion was kind of revolved around a lot of my personal life and again, kind of healing from these family situations that were happening. And through that came this like very beautiful thing where in meet and greets um, throughout the the tours or whatever, these people were coming up to me and saying really really kind things, um, but also really heavy because the contents of, of the record were a little bit heavier. And so on any given night, a 14 year old would come up and say, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't, I've been 
free from self-harm for like a month. And this song, this so-and-so song helped. And um, for me, it was like, I don't want to be a person that, that decompartmentalizes that because I want to feel that. But also it felt um, very heavy on me over the course of, you know, 200 shows that we did because I, I after it, it was like, oh, just take a picture. You know, it's like, you just said that. It's like, oh no, like I want to like wrap my hands around you and just tell you, you know, all these things. And that, that probably would be inappropriate, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I, I think the point is just like, it, it was really sweet and they were offering me this gift for the reason why I want to make music. I want to help hopefully help my story can help people. Um, but it also became very, very hard. And so I wrote this song kind of as a response um, to those um, beautiful people. It's called Beautiful Anyway. You told me the other day you hate yourself with anxiety, depressed the mess to death, you'd open up and welcome wide with a smile. Told you it's clinical, that I seem so critical. I wish I could convince the thoughts that you keep on believing were a lie. There you go. Feeling so broken as alone. You walk your head held so low. See someday that you are beautiful anyway. You look in the mirror, but you try to see it here. Crazy and amazing you are, and then let it inside. You can't be scientific, or oh, trust me, no, I get it. But I won't agree when you tell me you don't deserve a lie. Feeling so broken and alone You walk with your head held so low You want to give in most of the day And that's okay but I hope you see someday that you are beautiful anyway. Raise your hands. Take a second and breathe in. Sing it. I'm here for a reason. Raise your hand, take a second and breathe in, singing hallelujah, I'm known in love. Raise your hand, take a second and breathe in, singing I'm here for a reason. Raise your hands, take a second and breathe in, singing hallelujah, I'm known in love, and away you fly, free with your head held so high, cause you never let up. The fight you never gave in on those days in the pain, and that's what makes this life so wonderfully awesome and horribly awful. Yet somehow it's beautiful anyway.
Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you feel like there's a warm hug through the uh, the video from me to you and encouraging your spirit just to keep moving forward, creating, living your life bestly, filled with love. <laughs>